Welcome to New Canaan, Connecticut, and welcome Polestar to our town. This is the town where Kyle and Katie grew up, and uh, it's a little suburban town outside of New York City. The train station right over there that I've taken into New York City for so many years. Um, we are welcoming a new car dealership, and I do say dealership, I'll explain it in a little bit, but Polestar has taken over the old Merrill Lynch building, moved across the street, and, uh, and Polestar is here now in this beautiful little town of New Canaan. Let's get into that, talk a little bit about that story, and also talk a little bit about Polestar in general, what their expansion plans are in terms of how they're gonna be building a plant down in South Carolina, and perhaps why, look at this little thing going down, beautiful. For those of you who might watch the channel, you may see in caffeine and carburetors videos here in this little town. But even when that's not going on, this is a fun town for cars. But let's get into it and talk Polestar coming to New Canaan, Connecticut. We've got a Model Y all marked up, a Model 3, wow, from Texas, a Lucid. Wow, and just your typical little French car. Let's talk Polestar. Um, just over my left shoulder here is the new Polestar location. Again, that's the site of the old Merrill Lynch office here in town. Uh, they moved across the street to a much bigger location. And, you know, I, I find it actually really interesting that Polestar is expanding here to this little town of New Canaan. Um, Recently, some of you may have seen a video where I was over in Westport at the Volvo dealership, which is actually the dealership that sells Polestars today here in Fairfield County. Um, they're also affiliated with the Manhattan, uh, if you will, dealership as well. Now, the interesting thing about the Westport location, and I've spoken to the manager over there, a great guy, and I've actually filmed twice at the New York City location at Polestar. And, and I've found that the people, when you talk to them uh, at Polestar or Volvo, they're very knowledgeable about their cars. Um, what's also interesting is that even though it feels like a direct to consumer sort of pitch or um, methodology of selling cars, it's actually not. There's, there's a dealership that's involved in the middle. So you're not buying the car directly from Polestar. So to be clear, um, Polestar is 100% owned by Volvo, which is 100% owned by Geely, a Chinese manufacturer. And as a result of that, in combination with the fact that the Polestar 2 is not made in the United States, it's made in China, that car no longer qualifies for the federal tax credit, even though it's under 55,000. It's just not made here and the battery's not made here. So, um, and, and what's also interesting is that this is, this is actually going to be the new location for the Westport Volvo dealership to sell their Polestar cars. And some of you may remember, I was a little bit baffled when I went over to the Westport location for, uh, at Volvo because there, there wasn't even any signage for you know, Polestar. There were a couple of them out front. As a matter of fact, they had a Polestar 3 out front, which I remember, which is pretty cool. They had a couple of Polestar 2s uh, up front, but there, if, I mean, I looked hard and I couldn't find any sign that said Polestar. And I was like, how in the heck are you supposed to sell these cars if you're not even advertising that? Compare that to the Lincoln Center sort of midtown location of the dedicated Polestar dealership, which is absolutely beautiful, um, really gorgeous dealership. I, I, I was a little confused. And then I just drove by here and, today and and it's a sunday and they're in there working putting down the floors and uh, and and they seem to be super close to being able to open up this dealership here in in new canaan so first of all best of luck to you i think it's going to be interesting to see how that goes um, now recently kyle just uh did a video over on the out of spec reviews channel about the polestar 3 which i think is beautiful it's an suv and that vehicle, the one that he tested out, uh, had to be made in China because the Ridgefield or the Ridge something or other, <laughs> can't remember the exact town, 
in South Carolina, they're building a, a manufacturing plant. That's where the Polestar 3 is going to be made. And as soon as they start producing cars out of the US, then at least that car, the Polestar 3, assuming it's under MSRP of 80 grand, because it is an SUV, that car will qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit. And um, I've got a lot of time for that Polestar 3. It's not cheap, but it is, it's kind of an interesting uh, vehicle. I want to definitely keep my eye on. The Polestar 1, a very special car. Uh, it's the only plug-in hybrid other than, believe it or not, the Mitsubishi Outlander that is um, capable of DC fast charging. As a matter of fact, some of you may remember that, uh, oh, that Alyssa drove the Polestar 1 across the country and I think actually technically owns the Cannonball Run record for the uh, plug-in hybrid EV record going across the country because I think it's the only plug-in hybrid EV that's ever done that. Um, subsequently, uh, Kyle actually bought that car and now has it in, in the uh, Connor family inventory. Beautiful car, really unique piece. But they no longer make the Polestar 1. The Polestar 2s are, are pretty much just now, um, you know, everywhere, right? You see them all over the place. As a matter of fact, Hertz went big onto them, into them from a rental car standpoint, in addition to Tesla. Sort of backed away from that a little bit now. But you do get a lot of these uh, Polestar 2s that show up at Tesla superchargers and they're trying to plug in and they're like, uh, you need to find a CCS charger until these puppies uh, support uh, NACS, which is, is a whole different topic. Um, but you know, it, the, the, but the Polestar 3 and the smaller equivalent, the Polestar 4, are coming out um, soon. And then the Polestar 5, which is gonna be a, a really interesting piece, that's gonna be down the road. So Polestar is making a commitment, not just here in the United States, but in Europe and Asia as well. And they're hitting the gas. Uh, they're hitting the electric uh, accelerator, I should say. Now, Polestar is trying to position itself as the performance arm of Volvo. But when I say arm, that kind of means that it's affiliated. And I think the market is getting a little bit confused as to Polestar, Polestar as far as the branding. Like when this opens up here, let's call it, in, I would think in under a month, it seems like they're really imminent. And let's say somebody walks in off the street and says Polestar, w what is that? Is that like, you know, I don't know what that is. Um, it's a car, obviously here's the car. It's owned by Volvo, right out of the gates people are going to be a little confused because Volvo has their own electric vehicle lineup. And, and the question is, what makes them different? So Polestar is trying to associate themselves with the more of the performance end of things rather than the luxury end of things. And I mean, I, get, I guess I get that with the Polestar 2 and they have the performance pack and the long range battery pack with the higher output motors and all of that. But, um, you know, especially when you're, you're not able to take the $7,500 federal tax credit and you're comparing that to, let's say, a Tesla Model 3 performance, which I think is a pretty good direct comparison. I mean, you got to have a special desire in your, in your heart to not want to buy a Tesla to go and consider one of those vehicles. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting to see how Polestar does here in New Canaan. Like I said, I wish them best of luck. I personally don't fit that well in the Polestar 2. It's a very cockpity feel. Uh, my legs are long, I'm six foot five. I do have headroom, but it feels very narrow to me. The Polestar 3 is definitely something I, I, I would like to check out. I, I, I do like that vehicle. But um, yeah, I just think it's interesting that they're separating away from Volvo. Uh, they've already done it in New York City. It's kind of a weird area where they did it. Most of the EV, um, sort of traffic in New York City is down in Meatpacking District. You've got Lucid down there, which is direct to consumer. You got Tesla down there, which is also direct to consumer. Although the, the the Tesla and the Lucid showrooms, both in New York City, they can't sell cars because they're not a dealer. And so, if you want to buy a Tesla in New York City, you got to go over to Brooklyn. Which, um, which is interesting to me. I mean, these, these rules and these laws, they, get, they just get so confusing. So my understanding is this is a dealership 
that will be able to sell cars directly out of here, just like they can out of Westport, and just like they can out of their Manhattan Lincoln Center dealership. But um, uh, yeah, so listen, best of luck to you, Polestar. I'm glad to see you here in our town of New Canaan. Welcome. Thanks again, everyone, for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.